What if Deku never got one for all? Part 2. Now, last time I said this was a mini-series, which means it's only going to have, like, four parts to it. Which, it's not going to be, like, one of the bigger series, like, what if Deku was Garo? So, last time, I said... Or, last time, Deku just passed the UA Entrance exam. So, he's walking today to UA. Now, he gets into UA... And they do all of this, or, this stuff where Aizawa comes in and he says, Okay, okay, so now you guys are going to do a court test to see who, you know, who gets, or who gets expelled. Now, everybody who saw Deku punch the robot who thought he has... Some type of strength enhancing quirk. When really he has a martial arts quirk and a fire quirk. Which his martial arts quirk is just going to be his villain quirk. While his fire quirk is going to be his actual one. So Deku walking. So Deku walks. Um, so Deku basically, he does, Arizawa throws him the ball, and he's like, okay, you got the highest score in the entrance exam, throw this ball. So Deku catches the ball, and he steps inside the circle. He winds his hands back, and just chucks the ball, before sending a cyclone of fire straight at the ball. Now this obviously confuses people like Aizawa and Uraka because they clearly saw him destroy the one-pointer with a punch or the zero-pointer with the punch and not fire. So they were obviously confused by this and Aizawa asks him like I thought you had a strength cork and he's like didn't you read my application? I have a fire cork. My strength is just from pure training. So right off the bat, I saw was like, heh, I like this kid. Gets straight to he's he's trains. Unlike most of these kids who were hand who had their powers handed to them. So they do the next test, which is which is the ball throw. Deku takes the ball or, not the ball throw, the running. Deku runs easy. He's faster than Ida. As he puts fire on his feet and blasts off. Also using his strength to get a good start. Kind of like how, um, I forgot his name, but he's from Fire Force. He's a devil or demon person in Company 8. He's the main character. Forgot his name. But, kind of like how he does it. And he beats Ida. Now, the rest of the tests basically go all in Izuku's favor. As he gets 100. He gets first in all of them. Everybody is just so surprised by the amount of power that Deku shows. Like, they have no clue how this kid is so strong. So, Deku... Of course, of course, likes the fact that he's already stronger than all of his classmates, as he already got first. And Manetta will end up getting expelled. Which, I'll have a pretty good twist in, in it. With that, I think you guys can probably guess on what it'd be. But, Manetta gets expelled, and Deku, Deku goes first first place. So, after that day and Deku's walking back to his hideout, he, when Deku's walking back to the villain hideout, as you guys know, he's the leader of the League of Villains. He walks in to see a familiar looking hair of grapes. He walks in and immediately asks Kirigiri, who's this kid? He's like, oh, he just got expelled from UA and wanted to join. 
so Deku's like, huh? So you're, so you're Mineta, huh? Wow. So you want to join? Well, if you're gonna want to join, you're gonna have to go through some, cr some cruel training. Kirogiri, take him away for a month and train him. I don't care what happens to him if he dies or if he survives. Just take him away and train him. Which Mineta pisses his pants, but he's like. This is what it does to get payback on Aizawa, then it's what he does. So, in that month, they basically teach Mineta not to be a pervert. But, so back to Zuku and going to UA. The next day, he goes to UA, only for All Might to come in and say, and say, Okay, class, today we're going to be doing Heroes vs. Villains. And everybody was pretty much cheering for All Might besides Deku, which kind of confuses some people. But then, when All Might sees that he's, like, the one kid that's not cheering, he looks at him, only to be, like, faced with, like, distraught and kind of grief, as that was the kid he yelled at for being reckless against the Sludge villain. So, so he was obviously kind of sad at himself, for letting that go, but he also wants to know how he made it in, as he said he was corkless. So, so after this, after all of this happens, Deku ends up getting paired with Muraka, just like the main timeline against Bakugo and Ida. All Might's obviously, like, he wants to see what happens, as last time he checked, Deku was corkless. So, All Might announces that the heroes may head in. And Deku, being smart, he tells Uraraka as soon as Bakugo charges at him to run and go find the bomb, just like in the main series. So, this Deku, very smart, and he... He sees this coming miles, like, he's, he can see this, mi like, miles away. He, he knows this is going to happen. Like, it's so obvious. So, Deku's waiting there as Uraraka runs off. As he hears De Bakugo yell, Deku, you bastard! As Deku just looks behind him and he's like, huh, wonder what's up with this guy. And he's like, oh yeah, it's Bakugo. As Bakugo sends a massive explosion only for Deku to put up a flame wall or a firewall. This just makes Bakugo even more mad or angry as he charges at him again. Which Deku keeps, keeps blocking it. Which ends up making Bakugo sweaty enough to where he can use his gauntlet. He's like, heh, die now, Deku, as he pulls the pin. All Might tries to stop him, but all Baki goes like he won't die if he, if he dodges. <sighs> and the look on their face, if you can imagine. Deku stands still, just eyeing the explosion with no fear present. He's just staring at it with kind of like a sadistic smile on his face. He's staring right at Bakugo. And then looking right back at the explosion, it's a hit him full on. And then that, there's a bunch of dust, there's a huge dust cloud that appears. Once it falls, Dek Bakugo sees something that truly horrifies him. Deku's standing there, perfectly fine, hasn't moved an inch, just same sadistic smile. Spocky goes like, what? How? As Deku tells Bakugo that his flame cork gives him immunity to all flames. And he can control any and all flames, as his cork is called Flame Master. So, Deku... Deku's pretty overpowered, like some of his classmates can tell, and they know that Todoroki's cork is half fire. So they know Deku could pretty much easily beat Todoroki, as fire can pretty much melt ice easily. So after that day, 
And let's say a month goes by as there's a month time before the USJ. They do their normal classes and training. Stecky goes back to the villain hideout to see Moneta, who has been subject as a missing person report for the past month. Deku tosses him a knife, which Mineta catches, as Deku tells him, the last step to your training is to kill your mother, or to kill your parents. Which Mineta is obviously kind of sad, horrified, and also kind of angry that he's going to have to do this, but he has the mentality of, if it, if it has to be done, then it has to be done. So, Moneta goes on to find his mother and kills him, and kills him, his mother, and his father. Now, I'm not really sure, well, you guys might not really be sure about Zuku's mother, as I never really brought it up, I don't think. She ended up dying in a fire when he was, like, right after All Might told him he can't be a hero. So, I kind of left that out last part, but now you guys know. So, so yeah, and obviously Deku, Deku doesn't have to kill her, but he's let, he let go of things. He doesn't have any, like, personal belonging that he holds on to. He cares for nobody. So if Dob your Toga died, he doesn't care. They're not an asset. If Kirigiri died, he might care. I mean, it's a warp quirk, but not really. So, Deku... So, on the finally, the day before the USJ, everybody must vote for who should be the class president. Now, I'm going to say it's pretty obvious choice. Everybody's like, Deku's so OP, he should probably be the class president as he has a very competitive attitude and he basically always wants to win. So, they end up voting him as the class representative with Momo as the vice rep. So, after that, same thing happens while with the UA getting stolen files, except when everyone gets up, Deku doesn't get up, he doesn't get up, and he just keeps eating. Which, like, kind of confuses some of his classmates until they remember, oh yeah, he doesn't really care. Because, I'm going to say, he's told, like, his classmates, that if anybody has ever invaded the school, and if they try and kill him, and he ends up getting hurt, if he dies, he dies. At least he's living his dream. At least he's working towards his dream. Which is sort of a lie, because he's not trying to be a hero. But he does have something that he really wants to do. Now, after this day, and they have stolen files, Deku goes to All for One. And he tells All for One, if he has two quirks that could be necessary... To basically conquering the world. The first quirk is a duplica duplication quirk, or like a clone quirk, where he can clone himself to be an exact copy, and if he gets hurt, it stays there until Deku decides to, to disperse it. And now the second quirk is like shape shifting, or like changing what you look like. Like with the snap of his fingers, he could change. From, like, the normal green-haired kid to somebody with, like, black spiky hair. So, so he ends up getting those two quirks. And on the next day is the USJ incident, which is pretty much, like, the turning point of everything happening. So, I hope you guys did enjoy What If Deku... Never Got One For All, Part 2. And yeah, guys, bye.